Let's have a look at question two in this video. So we have Ben and Jerry who produce ice cream using labor and capital. These are their production functions of Ben, of Jerry. Now we have the endowments of their uh, production inputs. So this one is for Ben. He has three units of capital, five units of labor, and Jerry has six units of capital and three units of labor. Now what's gonna be the Edgeworth box? And is there room for trade? So let's do these questions together because they go hand in hand. Now, before we go further, we must understand what is the actual production function? How is that gonna look like? So in the case of Ben, we can see that we have this minimum thing and we recall that the minimum function is the perfect complements. In other words, Ben is gonna need the same amount of capital and labor. Whatever extra he has is unnecessary. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now let's have a look at Jerry. Jerry has uh, this production K plus L. Now to understand what the production function is gonna be, to be able to draw the ISO quant on the Edgeworth box, we must know the MRTS because the MRTS, the marginal rate of technical substitution is gonna give us the slope of the ISO quant. Now what is the MRTS in the case of Jerry? That's going to be the marginal product with respect to labor divided by the marginal product with respect to capital. Now what is the marginal product with respect to labor? That's going to be labor derivative with respect to labor, which is one. A marginal product with respect to capital for Jerry is capital derivative with respect to capital, which is one again. So one divided by one is equal to one, meaning that the ISO quant is gonna have the slope of one. It's gonna be a straight line. Now, with that said, we can draw the following ISO quants on this Edgeworth box. We need the endowment point first, endowment points. Before drawing the endowment points, let's see what we have here in total. This is a closed economy. So if we add up the units of capital for both players, for both companies, we will have the total units of capital in the economy. So the capital of Ben plus the capital of Jerry is equal to three plus six, three plus six, that's equal to nine units of capital in total. Now the same logic, let's do it for the labor. Five units of labor, five units of labor of Ben plus three units of labor of Jerry, so five plus three, equals to eight units of labor in total. Now let's draw this on our Edgeworth, Edgeworth box, so we have it. In total we have nine units of capital, in total we have eight units of labor. Now let's plot the endowment points. So the first endowment point is going to be which one? Three and five for Ben, three units of capital, so let's say this would be three units of capital, a third of this line, something like that and five units of labor. So five units of labor probably over here. This is going to be the endowment point for, for Ben and it's also the endowment point for Jerry. But for Jerry, we have the remaining, the remaining capital and labor. So for, for uh, Jerry, we will have the following. We will have six units of capital. So the capital of Jerry belongs to six units at this yellow point. And we also have for Jerry, for Jerry, we have three units of labor. So these are the remaining three units of labor. Now, at this point, how can we draw the ISO quants? Recall that the ISO quant for Ben is going to be uh, the perfect complement ISO quant, which is looking something like that. Now, we know that we will have the minimum between the capital and labor. So if we if we calculate the minimum between the minimum between his endowment point three and five. What's that gonna be equal to? That's gonna be three and three. In other words, we need three units of capital, three units of labor, meaning that we have an excess of two units of labor. We have an excess here, two extra units of labor. So if we go on the graph and plot three units of capital, three units of labor for Ben, this is, this is where the isoquant is starting. And then it's going up and to the right. So this one is going up and to the right. Now, why do we draw it like that? Because recall, going up, this straight line over here is showing us that no matter how, many, how much extra labor we have, it's not giving us additional production. The, the ISO quant is for the same level of production. So we have the same level of production along these straight lines. And by the same logic, no matter how much extra capital we have, it doesn't help us produce more. So that's the intuition. And the actual point of endowment, the initial point, let me draw it in a different color so it's more visible. This one over here, this is where the players, this is where the companies are at the moment. So we can clearly see that Ben is having extra labor at that specific point. That's one thing to keep in mind. Now, 
Also at the endowment point, what else can we draw? We can draw the isoquant of Jerry, which has a slope of 1. So we can draw a straight line through that specific point. We, I'm going to try to do it straight. So it's going to look something like that. This would be the isoquant for Jerry. Isoquant for Jerry. The other one, let me just note it, that is the isoquant for Ben. Isoquant for Ben. Recall that any difference between the isoquants gives us a signal that we can trade. We can exchange capital for labor. So this is going to be our room for trade. And we answered both questions. We drew the Edgeworth box. We show what is the room for trade. In the next video, we're going to discuss how exactly we can actually trade.